Hey guys, Vladimir here. Last weekend I had some family over, which included a bunch of my nephews and nieces, and they completely wiped me out of my fidget spinners. I had one nephew who requested this uh, Ninja Star type of spinner, so I went ahead and modeled it in Fusion and printed it, and was really happy with the way it came out, so I thought I would do a quick video showing you how to make it. Here's the finished model we'll be making, and don't worry, it's actually a lot less threatening once printed in plastic. I did go in though and file down the tips a little bit because they do print a bit sharp. Now the main reason I wanted to do this tutorial was to show how to get these angles here. Uh, the angles you see, you know, that tapered angle um, that you see in swords or knives. Um, I figured some of you may be into uh, making your own props or you're into cosplay. And being able to do that can come in handy. And it's actually ridiculously simple in Fusion. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how I made this. I started off by simply typing dagger fidget spinner into Google. Found one that I liked and just simply downloaded it and then went back to fusion go to insert attach canvas i'm going to choose my xy plane click on select image and go ahead and grab that image uh, next we uh, want to bring our opacity down so i brought it down to about 30 and click on display through and then click ok so we'll go to a, a top view of this and uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is to calibrate this. Um, so I know that I want this particular arm here to be 30 millimeters from here to the tip. So what I'm going to do is expand canvas, right click, go to calibrate, and I'm just going to click on those two points. So from here to here, I want that to be 30 millimeters. So I'm going to click enter and that um, goes ahead and calibrates it. Uh, so now I'm ready to create a sketch. So I'm going to go to create sketch and stay on that same plane there. And I'm mainly going to be using my spline tool here. So I'm going to go to sketch spline and simply uh, trace this out. Now I'm not looking for an exact replica. Um, and I actually want my model to be wider than this is. So I'm going to um, give myself uh, a little room here around the edges. And each time you want a sharp transition, you'll have to uh, stop the spline and then restart it. So I'm just going to right click and repeat spline to start it. And then I'll click the check mark each time I want to stop it. So with the spline tool, the, usually the lesser points, the better. Uh, you'll get a much smoother transition. Uh, for this final um, length here I'm gonna choose my arc tool so I'll go to my three-point arc and just put an arc here and then I'm finally gonna close this off with just a line connecting these two alright so now that that's sketched I can go in and tweak these points so I can just grab these points and move them around um, this looks fine maybe give this a little more of a curve here drag this up and once you're happy with it, you can simply stop tweaking. And then, so we'll go to stop sketch, and I don't need to see that canvas, so I'm going to untoggle that. Click on this profile, E for extrude, and I'm going to go from one side to symmetric. I can choose either half length or whole length. I know what I want my whole length to be, and that's going to be 7 millimeters because that's the thickness of my bearing. And here is the part that I really want to show you guys. Uh, so to get those angles, uh, you know, that you see in, in swords, um, so to do that, there's a really simple way. I'm simply going to use my taper angle here, and I can take this slider here and just move it. You can see if I go outwards, uh, if you go too much, you'll, you'll see it disappear, but you can give it these outwards angles or you can go inwards. And I'm simply going to type in negative 40 degrees there. And that looks like that's too much, so let's try negative 35. That works, so I'm going to click Enter and look at this. Okay, so I see a few issues. This is getting a little too skinny here for me. So let's go back into that sketch. And the nice thing is I can just change this out um, or uh, go ahead and make changes to my sketch, and it'll automatically reflect it in my model. So. I want to make this actually wider here, so I'm going to drag that out, drag this, and drag this out. 
and let's see how that looks okay that looks a lot better so um, you know I don't have that little skinny skinny island here um, and in fact I can go back to my extrude and remember how it didn't let me do 40 for a taper angle before so let's try negative 40 now and now that works but it is getting a little skinny over here so let's try um, oops wrong let's go back to that sketch and let's try making that a little thicker so let's push this out maybe more a little more here maybe even bring this out and let's see how that looks okay got more room here so I'm happy with that actually not quite I want to bring this out even a little more so I'm gonna take this out and bring this in a little bit okay so that's looking good uh, next I'm gonna go back to that sketch and I want to create now um, the circle for our uh, bearing to go into um, I was gonna do it in the center but you know what I don't need to let's just create it uh, somewhere here I'm gonna click C for circle uh, my bearing is 22 millimeters so I'm gonna give it a small tolerance of uh, 0 0.05 so I'm gonna go 22.05 hit enter do an offset of that so I'm just gonna go to offset here or you can go to sketch offset do a four millimeter offset and I'm gonna to go to stop sketch uh, show my sketch by clicking on the browser here uh, e for extrude let's bring this up but let's do it the same way we're gonna go from one side to symmetric go to whole length click seven millimeters and click OK all right so now that I have those two pieces in place I'm gonna now move this dagger uh, part here into my uh, bearing holder here so let's go to we'll just right click on this and go to move I'm gonna to go to a top view I'm gonna change this from faces to bodies I'm gonna to have to select it again and I'm just gonna move this into place and I just want to make sure that this part here crosses uh, that that uh, outer circle there and make sure that everything is still inside uh, that uh, cylinder there and so once that's where I want it I'm just gonna click OK and now I want to create another copy here on this side so there's a few ways I can go about this normally if I just want two copies I do a mirror but in this case I'm gonna do a circular pattern instead um, and that's just gonna save me a step of uh, going ahead and constructing a mid plane in here so let's go to create uh, pattern circular pattern I'm gonna change this to bodies click on this particular body uh, as my axis I'm just gonna choose uh, any one of these uh, circles bring this quantity uh, from 3 to 2 and click OK so I don't need to see sketches so let's untoggle that all right if we expand bodies we'll see that we have three separate bodies I want to combine everything into one so let's go to modify combine choose our center part as our target body and the rest as our tool bodies and then click OK and we can see we were down to one body final thing I'm going to do is just put a chamfer here so let's go to modify chamfer and I'm going to choose one two three and these four outer edges enter a chamfer of two millimeters and click OK and that's it there is our dagger spinner so now I can uh, go ahead and print this out oh before we do that let's just confirm that measurement um, so I want to measure from the midpoint to this edge and I want that to be around 50 so let's uh, hope that I'm close so to create a point here to measure I'm going to go to construct point at center click on the outer edge here uh, and now I can go to uh, inspect choose on that point that, that I just got and click on this edge here that show me 50.5 that's perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and I will send this to the printer one more point if you look at the canvas here you'll notice there are these little nubs here and I didn't model these I wanted to keep this video short enough but wanted to point that out to you in case you want to go ahead and throw those in uh, they should help with uh, spinning because they give you some extra points to be able to uh, 
grab it with your finger and, and spin it. So I just wanted to point that out in case you do want to throw those in your model. Uh, it should be simple enough to do. I sent this to my Prusa i3 Mark II printer where I printed the body and then the finger pads. The assembly was straightforward. Just snap in the bearing and then snap in the finger pads. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial in the comments below. And if you're looking to learn how to design with Fusion 360, I've got an entire course just on fidget spinners. Uh, I go through seven different designs and each one teaching you some new concepts and tools in Fusion 360. So check it out. I'll leave a link below. It's at desktopmakes.com.